Now, if you have the iPhone 14 Pro Max and are considering to upgrade to the 15 Pro Max released just a few weeks ago, right? My advice is don't. Honestly, unless you have too much money to spend or you just absolutely need to get the latest tech every single year, just save the money because I'm sure you're not the professional content creator who absolutely must have the ProRes Lock Mode or the ability to record on 4K60. But if you're holding on to the 13 Pro Max or older phone, is this the phone to upgrade to? Well, having pitched the 15 Pro Max against our professional mirrorless camera and also the 15 Plus, it's time we do a Royal Rumble or test where we put up the 13 Pro Max, the 12 Pro Max, the 11 Pro Max and even the 10S Max against the new 15 Pro Max. Just to let you know, if you stumble onto this video, this is actually the sixth and last episode in a series where I talk about and compare the new iPhone 15 Pro Max and the 15 Plus. Now go watch the previous five episodes if you haven't after this one. Now at the same time, remember to subscribe to our channel and select all so that you won't miss out on any videos from us in the future. So back to the comparison of the five Pro Max models. Now, in case you're wondering, right, prior to the 15 Pro Max, I was actually using the 12 Pro Max. Yes, it was a three-year-old phone, but for my use cases at that time, right, the video and photo capabilities on that phone were actually good enough. I use it to take personal photos and uh, also some behind the scenes shots for my Instagram and TikTok channels. Now, links to those channels in the description. My wife, on the other hand, was using something even more dinosaur, which is the 10S Max, which was, I think, the first big size phone that Apple released five years ago. And because of a job as a, a real estate agent now, right, that phone cannot work for her anymore. So she upgraded to a 15 Plus. So this is the intent of this video. Should you upgrade if you are still using one of the older Pro Max models? Now, if you're holding on to the 14 Pro Max, like I mentioned earlier, right, you probably shouldn't be upgrading because the additional features don't justify the price tag. But on the other hand, right, I guess if you're still holding on to a 10S Max, then I would definitely recommend you to do so. But Maybe not necessarily to the 15 Pro Max. So anyway, let the Royal Rumble begin. We'll be pitting the five phones on these few tests. Now again, like in every other episode in the past, right? in addition to this performance test, I'll also share with you my take on which phone you should be upgrading to, if there's a need at all. But remember, I'll be comparing only the video capabilities here because we are a video production company. In any case, be sure to watch all the way till the end, okay? Now, let's go! The first test, talking head videos. Here are the five shots side by side, starting with the 10s Max on the left and ending with the 15 Pro Max on the far right. Okay, now, you get to see the shots one at a time. This is from the 10s Max. Now, the 11 Pro Max. The 12 Pro Max, the 13 Pro Max now, and finally here's the 15 Pro Max on full screen. And here they are again side by side. Now honestly aside from a slight change in colour tones right, and improvement on sharpness on the newer phones, there's not many other differences, right? Now the second test, walking shot with cinematic mode turn on if the phone has this. Here are the five shots side by side. Again starting with a 10S Max on the left and ending with the 15 Pro Max on the far right. Now the shots one at a time. This is the 10S Max, the 11 Pro Max, the 12 Pro Max, the 13 Pro Max now and you can see that we have the cinematic mode now. And finally, here's the 15 Pro Max on screen, also with the cinematic mode turned on. 
And here they are again side by side. Nice to see the evolution of the cameras, right? Next up, we compare the macro mode. Again, this test clearly shows what the older phones are lacking because only the 13 Pro Max and later models have this mode. Note that all the phones here are using the 0.5x lens except the 10s Max which doesn't have an ultra wide lens. Anyway, here are the shots individually. Here they are again, side by side. What a world of difference when we compare a phone from 5 years ago to the current one from this year, right? On to the fourth test and we are pitting the tele lens of the five phones. Now again, we get to see the evolution of the tele lenses here. Here are the five of them stacked together. And here's the 10s Max one. Notice only we have a 2x tele lens here. And this is the 11 Pro Max also with a 2x lens. Now from the 12 Pro Max onwards, we have a 2.5x lens and the 13 Pro Max introduces the 3X lens. And finally, this year's 15 Pro Max has the new 5X tele lens. Back to them side by side. Do you really have a need for the new 5X lens? Let me know in the comments below. Test number 5, slow motion. Now honestly, when I was testing with the 10S Max, I was wondering if it could shoot up to 240 frames per second for slow-mo. In fact, I was wondering the same thing for the 11 Pro Max. Amazingly, both phones can do 240 frames per second or 8 times slower than real-time. This is how they look side by side. individually. Now notice how the older phones have this shifting in colors after some frames. And I'm not sure why the 13 Pro Max has this juddering. It shouldn't. But looking at the 15 Pro Max, battery smooth slow more, right? It's great, isn't it? Test number six, and we are comparing the stabilization of the cameras. Here's another test that we can see how far the stabilization of the phones have come. When we put all five footages together, right, you can probably see how stable the latest phone stabilization is. And that's because for the 10s Max and the 11 Pro Max, although the One X camera has some optical image stabilization, on the 12 and the 13 Pro Max, that's when the sensor chips technology made all the shakes far more bearable. And with the 15 Pro Max with its second generation sensor shift optical image stabilization, it sort of looks even more stabilized, doesn't it? So here are all the five again. Last test, and this is on the dynamic range of the sensors. Now simply put, the dynamic range means how bright and how dark we can see in terms of the brightest whites and the darkest gray. Dynamic range also affects the colors in terms of their vibrancy. When we put all five footages together, you can probably see some difference on your phone, but not likely on your monitor if it's not HDR capable. In any case, right, here are the individual shots. First up, the 10S Max doesn't have any HDR or high dynamic range recording at all, so everything looks dimmer. The sky doesn't look as bright and the shadows on the subject makes her look dark against the sky. It's the same on the 11 Pro Max. But on the 12 Pro Max, you should be seeing more radiant colors and better highlights and shadows. And on the 13 Pro Max with ProRes HDR, the separation should be even better. Finally, we have the 15 Pro Max which goes another step up with ProRes Log which allows us to manually correct the colors to whatever we want. Here are all five again. Now remember, if you're watching this on an SDR screen, which is the case for most monitors and some TVs, right, you probably won't see much difference. So clearly, after all these tests, right, you can see that there are improvements from one generation to another. But are these 
improvements really important to you? I won't go into summarizing what the test results are, but I'll tell you what probably are the most important things, at least to me. Now, the first thing is the 0.5x ultra wide lens. The 10s Max doesn't have it, and I remember how handicapped I was trying to take uh, landscape and property interior shots. But since the 11 Pro Max, right, we have that already. Now, the second thing is the tele lens. The 2x lens really doesn't cut it for me. Even with the 2.5x lens, uh, I find it to be rather short. In my opinion, the 3x lens on the 13 Pro Max is the best. At least for my line of work when I frequently need to take portrait shots of people. The 2x and the 2.5x are not long enough and the 5x is way too zoomed in already. And the third best and must-have um, feature is the stabilization of the lenses. When I upgraded from the 10s Max to the 12 Pro Max, I couldn't go back. And now with the best stabilization on the 15 Pro Max, especially for videos, right? I really cannot imagine myself surviving with the older phones. But other than these three features, really, hmm, the rest like the cinematic mode, the HDR and the ProRes modes, right? And perhaps even the macro lens. Well, to me, I think they are gimmicks to most people. You probably use it once, then never again. So now my advice, should you upgrade? Well, if you are still using the 10s Max, I think the technology on this phone is too outdated already. Now, if you have the means to upgrade to the 15 Pro Max, right, you really see a world of difference. But if you want to save some money, right, even upgrading to the 12 Pro Max will open up a lot more features for you. Now, next, if you own the 11 Pro Max, uh, upgrading to the 15 Pro Max, I think it makes a lot of sense since your phone is already four years old now. But if you think that the price for the 15 Pro Max is too steep, maybe you can consider the 13 Pro Max since it has a cinematic mode, it has a better stabilization, a 3x camera, and better optics overall. Skip the 14 because I think it's essentially the same video camera as the 13 Pro Max. Now, if you're using the 12 Pro Max like I was, then an upgrade to the 15 Pro Max would prove to be a very enticing because of all the new features, especially the 5x tele lens, the macro mode. Well, if these are useful to you at all, just don't waste your money by upgrading to the 13 or 14 Pro Max because the increase in capability would be quite marginal. Otherwise, if you're just a casual point and shoot user, right? you probably can still stay on the 12, which in my opinion is still a good enough phone for 2023 and maybe even 2024. Next, 13 Pro Max users probably won't find it worthwhile to upgrade to the 15 Pro Max unless you absolutely must have the 5X lens and all the ProRes lock and action modes. And if you are a 14 Pro Max owner, right, I don't think you even need to bother to change your phone. So, there you have it, the comparison among the 5 Pro Max models. Yes, you have noticed that uh, there is the absence of the 14 Pro Max in this lineup. Well, because honestly, it's the same as the 13 Pro Max, with the exception of the action mode only. Besides, we don't have a 14 Pro Max with any of our crew too. So, well, in any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode and all the previous episodes in this series. And if you miss any of those, to we'll find the links to them on our channel, okay? Meanwhile, do subscribe and select all so that you won't miss out on our future videos. Okay, I'm Defender Colin from Burns and it's been a pleasure sharing with you my take on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the 15 Plus. I'll see you in a future series soon.